San Antonio native Deborah Vasquez has two passions, her culture and her art. Throughout her life, she has focused her boundless energy and her bold art on promoting ethnic pride and the achievements of the Chicano community. I guess ultimately I would like for us to be able to get a little recognition for the contributions that we've made to this, to this society so they can give us our self-respect and, and do self-respect, not just because we've assimilated into another culture and, and now we're palatable to other people, that, but because we're being who we are and we're being recognized for, for it. One need not look far to discover the source of Deborah's community pride. Her strong, independent-minded mother taught her to appreciate her roots. I never saw my mother in the submissive role. I grew up in a household where my mother was the matriarch. We lived on the east side, but did all our shopping and everything on the west side. Mom always said that we needed to always connect to the west side because that was the corazón of, of our gente, of, of the Chicanos, because we, at one point, that's the only place we could live. Her mother also recognized Deborah's depth of spirit. My mom always used to say, mi hija es puro corazón, you know, that I was all heart. Because I, I'm not, not, it's not always a good thing to feel everything, but I can feel things all the time. And so it's, it's a good and a bad thing sometimes. Her fervent nature and her artistic drive led her to explore interesting outlets for her creativity. I used to take my dolls and paint on them, you know, oh my, and we didn't have money. My mom would say, look how you make your dolls all ugly. <laughs> but I used to get the pens and I used to paint eyebrows and tattoos on my little dolls had tattoos on them. And I just, I did patterns on my dolls and my mom would be so upset. I used to cut the paper dolls out of, uh, I used to love those old Sears and Roebuck catalogs, and I couldn't wait till the year was over. I knew I wasn't getting the stuff in the catalog, but I got to cut out stuff, and I used to make, I liked those paper dolls more than the paper dolls they sold, because I could make them, then I'd glue different arms together, which is kind of interesting, because now I'm doing, I do a lot of collage. Other family members contributed to Deborah's development as an artist. She first learned about the use of color through the discerning eye of her grandmother. My first classes in color theory was for my grandmother, teaching me about colors and what colors went together. She didn't know about complementary colors and analogous colors or, or any of that arbitrary color. She just told me, estos van juntos, these go together, and it was their complementary colors. They uh, put this and it'll look good with this. It was just something innate that she knew. In her 20s, Deborah took some classes at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center, a community organization known for providing Chicano artists with an outlet for their artistic expression. There she thought she had discovered her life's ambition. I realized that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to teach art in a center like that because it, w it just encompassed everything that I believed in. And I loved, I loved the Guadalupe. Her commitment to social justice and Chicana empowerment has remained a constant in her life, and themes pertaining to fairness and equality continue to permeate her work. Deborah is attentive to and profoundly moved by the social realities of our nation, such as California's Proposition 187, an initiative that proposed denying health care, education, and social services to undocumented workers. I was in California and I saw in the newspaper there was a photograph of a woman holding her child and she just looked so distressed. I started reading about it and it was a four-year-old and she had, uh, she had all her family there but they were, they were uh, undocumented. And so what had happened was the child had leukemia and for fear that the rest of the family would get deported, they didn't take the baby to the hospital and the baby died and this horrible, agonizing death in her arms. And it was so touching and struck something really deep because not only was I coming, I, I guess because I was coming um, into my um, Chicanismo and, and getting to know who I was. I love the whole idea of, of living so close to the border and, um, and I never saw them separate from, 
from myself, that they were other people. Deborah decided to attend Texas Women's University to pursue her bachelor's degree at the age of 31. She later earned an MFA degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Throughout her education, Deborah's art remained driven by a passion for her community and for social justice. I feel like those, all those immigration laws are a direct attack on me. I take it very personal, and I think they are targeting us as a people. So anyway, that, that just made me do a lot more research on it, and I started my, which was going to be my bachelor's exhibit. Women's issues are another passion for Deborah. She expresses Chicana power in her art through icons such as the Statue of Liberty and her Chicana superhero and alter ego, Sitlali. She also refashions or repurposes some of the Chicano community's folklore. One of the pieces that I'm working on now is recently is called the La Llorona series, and it's dealing with not the Llorona in the traditional sense that uh, that Mexican culture has talked about the Llorona, about the woman drowning her children, because we don't even know if that story is true. This, this series itself is starting out with battered women. Women are going through all types of tortures with their husband, and that's every culture. Creating a female superhero as a central icon of her art carries with it questions on how to portray certain topics, such as violence. I think that we use violence in a very strange way. I always joke with my friend Patricia because she says, well, Lissi Lali's violent. I said, yeah, she is, but she's not violent against her people and she's not violent against people that you're supposed to love. But I don't think that violence is bad when you're defending yourself. Sometimes violence is necessary. Just as the comic book hero Superman spawned Superboy, Sitlali spawned her juvenile avatar, a defiant child enraged by the ills of this world. I have this little, they call little baby Sitlali, and Vicki Grice, uh, the performance artist, always says, God, that little baby Sitlali scares me, because she's just this little girl in, in little shorts, or sometimes she's like in underwear with a little t-shirt and, and cowboy boots, and she's got this little look on her face of defiance. I think that sometimes our kids need to be that. I always say, I'll take the student that's defiant every time over the passive one because I think that that child innately knows that something's wrong, that it's, something's not okay, and we just need to take them and gear them the right way. The artist also felt compelled to address the terms macho and machismo. Deborah takes exception with these words and how they are used to negatively stereotype men, especially Chicanos. I grew up with a very different idea of macho. My mom would say that my nephew, before he puts a beer in his belly, he makes sure that the kids have food and fruit and home and es bien macho. He's doing what he needs to do. And I think that even, you know, uh, feminists are talking about machismo. It's become this word that's a derivative of machismo. And I just don't like it delegated to our culture. We have a lot of different words we can use, sexism, misogyny. I don't think we need to connect it to, to our cultura. That's why I don't use the term and I don't really like it used. Deborah is enthusiastic about fellow artists she finds inspiring. In fact, she incorporates them into the high school art class she teaches. I also work with Gateway to College, uh, which is a high school within Palo Alto College that um, is for high school youth that are on the edge, they're at risk and I teach them art appreciation with a, through a Chicano lens. So they're learning about Chicano issues and history um, and art, but, but under the elements of design. In addition to Van Gogh and Rembrandt and all those other artists, they're also learning about Juan Alicia, Malaquias Montoya, Jose Montoya, and all these different people, and they're connecting. Our kids want to hear about themselves and how they connect with this, with, with majority culture. Deborah melds her creative ideas with serious research and her own writing to produce meaningful works. I do write a lot, and in my writing is when images come forth. I, and I have a lot, of, a lot of things just written on notes and, and little sketches and little drawings. That's kind of how I work. And then I do some research because I like to see what things look like. Now, they don't always end up looking like 
what I what I download or what I see or the images, but I, I like to know what it is before I'm gonna break the mold. I guess I grew up with that whole traditional idea is that you learn it and then and then you break it. You break those those uh, traditions. Her multifaceted approach to art includes collecting information from various sources on subjects ranging from popular culture to nature. The fact that Sitlali is a pre-Hispanic hero is instructive. The indigenous aspect and the pre-Hispanic communion with nature are central to Deborah Vasquez's art. The images you see, a lot of them are, are Mexican images. Um, they, I deal a lot with the nopal, but a lot of nature. I do a lot of um, images of nature also because I think it's really important that we connect back to nature. And of course, we're all full of uh, contradictions because I, I work on a computer and I love the Mac and I love the technology and I love that whole thing. But also there's a part of me that always wants to have a garden. So it's kind of like you, you're connected to technology, which some people would think it's the future. Maybe there's not. It's not going to be a future. And then there's this this past that's that's natural. And the Indians always believe that you know that's what our salvation will be. Deborah has sometimes used elements of nature to represent herself and her heritage. I think that the Maya is very representation of myself and a lot of people in our cultura because we have to do different things to survive. So, and the nopal, you know, there's that saying that says, no matter who you are, no matter if you, you tone down your dialect, no matter if you, uh, if you dress in trendy clothes, if you move to the north side and never see the people that you know, you know, you never connect with raza again, you carry the nopal on your frente. You know, you carry the nopal on your, because we look Mexican, you know, we, and it's who we are, you know, no matter how much you try to get away from it, it doesn't matter, people perceive you as who you are. I think that's a good thing. And so the nopal is really important to me. The corazón, or heart, is also integral to her life story and art. I do use that imagery a lot in, in my paintings. The corazón, you know, I always remember my mom saying about the corazón, the, the corazón of this. And uh, when I was a kid, my dad used to... Uh, used to break open the watermelon, you used to cut it somewhere, and then you break open, you could pull out the whole corazón, and he used to pull the corazón and give me the heart. Deborah likes to work with found objects in addition to other media. I do a lot of found object. Um, I'm, I love to gather what other people would call trash, windows and doors. I paint on windows and doors and things like that. Um, just something, sometimes I'm driving by and I see something and it's catches my eye and I'm like, oh, I'm going to pick that up. And so I'll stop and then we have brush pickup here every once in a while. I love that it's coming up. And so I can go around and look, pick up other people's trash. And then, you know, but it's also a way of recycling. You know, I, I think that Mother Earth is just tired of producing all this stuff for us that we just kind of dispose of. Regardless of the media she uses, Deborah's commitment to her messages remains steadfast and she feels strongly about how her art is categorized. I think the basic understanding that Chicano art was created as an arm of, of a political movement, I don't think that's something that we can change. I think that always has to have some type of political significance. And I think that there's a lot of Chicano artists making art. And then there's a lot of Chicano artists, Chicana and Chicano artists making Chicano art. And I think they're two very different things. And it's okay to do any type of art you want to do. I'm not saying that, you, but I think that for purposes of, of, uh, of history and categorizing and seeing where we're going, I think that there has to be those types of uh, differences made or to recognize those differences. Pasan la